Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Trainwreck Woodstock 99 is a limited documentary series out now on Netflix, which I watched uh, and was illuminating uh, a music festival that I did not attend. However, uh, 1999 was a big year for me. It was the year I graduated high school. Uh, I think it was also the year I did go to my first music festivals i went to warped tour as well as Ozfest, i believe in 1999 and uh did not go to to woodstock 99 and uh didn't really remember much of it you know i grad 99 was a crazy year not only the year i graduated but also got my first legitimate job working at a movie theater there was 1999 was a historic year for movie releases Uh, You got The Matrix, you got Fight Club, you got Office Space, you got all these kinds of movies, uh, The Sixth Sense, uh, so many great movies that came out that year. Um, And then there was this music festival that happened, this music festival that, uh, while watching this, I wasn't really surprised. You know, this music festival that, I guess there was one in 94 as well, that one I had memories of, there was... That one had, I think, Green Day playing, and there was a point where people were picking up chunks of grass and throwing it at the stage. Uh, That's not what happened. I thought that was 99, but apparently I think that was the 94 one. Uh, But this one was different because I guess the 94 one, people ended up breaking in and getting cutting through the fences, and like half of the crowd there didn't even pay to be there. Uh, So this one, they wanted to make sure it would be a profitable, like this whole music festival wasn't about peace and love. It was about profit. It was about how can we make this, this product profitable? You know, how can we turn the Woodstock brand of music festival into something that is like today is like Coachella or Lollapalooza was for, for a, a bit of time. Um, So that was kind of their intent. And you can see how that played out. You also can see the mentality of what it was like for kids in the 90s. Like just what the the like tone of kids were like, which I remember, you know, the music of the 90s, all the music that was in this documentary were like bands that I liked, you know, the new metal scene, the rap rock scene, Kid Rock, Limp Bizkit, Korn, Bush. Like all of these bands, the Chili Peppers, still still a big fan of the Chili Peppers, uh, kind of grew out of a lot of the other bands of the time. But in the 90s, when I was 18, 19 years old, that was my shit. Like I was the angsty, angry, white kid who was all about extreme. Like you watch this documentary and you can see like how – That generation was the generation of extreme, the generation of bros, right? That bro mentality, Uh, the the kind of birth of what is like typical toxic masculinity, like that kind of that that kind of vibe that is so prevalent today. Like all of those people that were the insane kids that went to this music festival are now the insane 40 year olds that are running for Republican, you know, primaries, you know, like it's, it's not crazy that we are living in a world of that bro mentality in politics, in the world, you know, where these people that just still have that same anger and that same angst, they never grew out of it, and now they're in their 40s. But it was crazy to kind of go into the, the time machine of documentaries and go back and see how things played out at the music festival. This is a three-part uh, docu-series. Each episode focuses on a different day of the festival. It's a three-day festival, uh, focusing on the different acts of the festival. Uh, It also talks about how there was a pay-per-view element. Uh, So even if you weren't able to attend, you could watch it via pay-per-view, which is kind of kind of crazy. Like they still do that today. I don't know. 
I mean, there's still live streams. I don't know if it, it still costs money, but from what this documentary shows, that that uh, the the pay per view version was a lot like an infomercial that was also popular in the '90s, the late '90s, uh, called "Girls Gone Wild." <laughs> you know, where you're just seeing all the debauchery and dysfunction and degenerate activities of these kids these extreme bros and and girls that were uh, caught up in all of that and how they acted behind the scenes uh, while p shows were going on on stage. Just insane. And also just how the venue where they held this place was like a, a, a an old military base and how it wasn't like rolling hills of grass. It was like tarmac that all of these kids were on and it's just like the most like corporatized version of what like the worst representation of what Woodstock initially meant to be about peace and love and now it's all about you know about like Mountain Dew and and like Doritos you know and even how like one of the ways they 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 tried to make it profitable was to they they signed like the 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 food rights over to another company so they didn't have any control over how things were priced people couldn't bring water into the venue you had to buy water there as the days went on and and vendors were running out of food they decided to price gouge people just because they knew they couldn't make any you know they couldn't they had no other options if they wanted to eat uh, the everything like cleaning up and dealing with the trash, everything else was like outsourced. So nothing got done. So like they were just surrounded like at the beginning of day two, right? They're doing like a remake of what happened at the first Woodstock where the first Woodstock, you had Jimi Hendrix playing the Star Spangled Banner. Except for this one, I forget who it was playing the Star Spangled Banner. But, like, the, the whole area is just coated in a layer of trash. And it's, like, this perfect metaphor for what America has become and what the energy of America was at that time of how, like, not only was there, like, the extreme bro, toxic masculinity type of vibe at the at the festival but it was also them angry at the fact what america what art had come to what everything had like everything had been homogenized into like a cellophane repackaged bullshit to make money like it wasn't about art it wasn't about love and everybody there saw right through it and they knew that nobody cared about anything everybody was just trying to make money off of them and they were already pissed off. They were already angry. Right? That's why angry movie music was so popular at the time. Because everybody was angry. E everything was like becoming repackaged and resold to us. Right? They were trying to repackage Woodstock and sell it to us as like this third rate garbage music festival. And they weren't happy about it. And it was represented by, like, all these people throwing garbage at the stage. It's just, like, this wave of garbage flowing towards the stage as they're playing the Star Spangled Banner. And that's what America was. That's what, like, that's what it, America represented. We represented garbage. We represented empty bottles, empty packaging of all this garbage food, this garbage things that we just consume and then we just throw away and we pretend like we're not producing all of this garbage and pretending that it's like good and that we're like flourishing and all of this bullshit but when all that bullshit doesn't get disappeared at the end of the night and we're just surrounded by the bullshit that we're given that we have to pay for right not only that we're given that we have to pay out the nose for this substandard way of life to see that that visualized in this wave of garbage that was thrown 
at the stage, encouraged by the dude playing the national or the Star Spangled Banner. I want to take a quick break from the show to let you all know that there is official merch for the Ray Taylor Show. Head on over to InspiredDisorder.com. You can get t-shirts, different artwork available, different designs, all on high quality materials in all the sizes. There's also iPhone cases made of biodegradable material. That's right. This is not bad for the environment. This is good for the environment. So all of those designs that are available on t-shirts are also available on phone cases designed by me, sold by me. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com to support the Ray Taylor show and promote it out in the world so all of the people in your life can see that you are a fan of the Ray Taylor show. Now, let's get back to that very show right now. Is, you know, it, it's sad. It's sad. And it's just kind of sad how this whole festival was mismanaged. You know, seeing how everybody was freaking out and, and, and scared when acts would go on, like, corn and they saw that you know the anger that like you could feel you could see like the crowd the giant pits of like anger and violence because that was the tone that was what kids in 1999 were feeling right we experienced the first mass shooting out of school in 1999 right we saw how little anything had done now that stuff is daily right we haven't done anything to fix anything they just repackage stuff everything's just repackaged regurgitated in order to make money we are nothing more than livestock in this country and this documentary shows how that was something that was around in 1999 how these kids yeah they were angry yeah, they, they came out of a, a, a generation where maybe they were uh, on some level coddled and spoiled in some ways, but also they saw through the bullshit. They saw through what, what capitalism did to culture, what capitalism did to art. They saw through all of that bullshit. And they had enough. They had enough. They were angry. Right. That's why bands like that that had that angry tone like Corn and Lump Biscuit. That's why they were successful because they tapped in those bands tapped into what was going on culturally. And things haven't really changed. They just we kind of just grew up tolerating this re repackaged bullshit. But it's interesting. It was interesting seeing you know the the Corn. Uh, when they went up on stage, how that was like a big moment in the first night when kid rock went on stage, how they were dealing with a mass. I mean, it was super hot and it was just tarmac and like super unprepared. Like the whole thing of Woodstock 99 was organizers being very unprepared and not giving a shit about the people that, that paid to be, to attend the event. Like they were treated like livestock in every essence of the word. And it was and charged to be so and charged a lot of money to be treated like livestock. <coughs> and during the Kid Rock, people are like passing out of heat exhaustion. I remember going to Coachella one year in uh, probably like 2003. And it was, you know, it's in the desert. It's in Coachella is a desert. And it was, you know, in April, it's, you know, before it really starts heating up. But it was probably still a hundred degrees outside and when you're at a music festival surrounded by human beings during like the peak heat of the day you want to talk about the prime time for people to just pass out for people to just be devastated by heat by exhaustion by dehydration and a lot of that was happening with the kid rock like so much of this documentary is showing the people behind the scenes like being unequipped to deal with anything like it was just insane situation after insane situation and you saw how like the promoters and stuff were trying to rely on the the artists to control the crowd right it's like oh we need to can you 
Can you go calm them down, Kid Rock? Hey, Limp Biscuit, could you not? Could you not sing any songs from your catalog? Right? Could you not rile them up in any way? Could you not perform? I know we hired you to perform, but could you not do the thing we hired you to do? Because it's kind of making them all, all uppity and angry. It's like, do you not know what was going on culturally at the time? Do you not know what that music was? It's just like these people that had this romantic idea of what Woodstock was and think that they can repackage it and sell it to another generation and trying to profit off of them because of their failures at it past attempts so they're going to take it out on this new crowd of people we're going to we're going to we're going to suck every last dollar out of them and we're not even going to like take the moment to to realize what energy comes from them listening to this kinds of these kinds of music this kind of music it's just insane it's insane and you see like medical tents being like overrun you know during the kid rock thing because of dehydration during the the limp biscuit thing because of just the massive thing they started tearing stuff down like there was a security tower where people in security tower all freaked out because they're just like there and they're just surrounded by thousands of angry kids that are high out of their mind. Like that was one aspect. I mean, you go to any music festival, what are you going to do? Of course. That's what music festivals, aside from music, it's drugs. Of course. Especially Woodstock. Like the idea of going as a kid to go to a music festival and do drugs is the same kind of romantic idea that these promoters have by thinking that they can just... like. The reality of, of their actions is not the same as what their romantic ideals were in their head. And even on the third day, where like everything, like they somehow managed to get through the, the two days. And then like the third day, they have like, you know, what looks like mud covering everything, but it's really just sewage the water supply is tainted with sewage like it's just shit everywhere shit water shit mud people are leaving because they're exhausted they're broke they're coming down with trench mouth because of the t the tainted water because they're getting ill from just existing in that environment so it's just like a bunch of people and then there but then like there was still a lot of people sticking around because there was this rumor there was this potential, like, last act that everybody is going to stay for. Like, even the crew members didn't know who the last act was. There was rumors going all around. There was going to be Bob Dylan, that it was going to be, I forget some of the, that it was going to be Prince, right? The Chili Peppers were the second, supposed to be the second to the last act to perform at Woodstock. And there was supposed to be this crazy surprise guest. So there was tons of people waiting around that didn't leave early. And again, these promoters in their like romanticized vision of what this festival was going to be. They're like, we're going to make this. We're going to do a candlelight vigil during the Chili Pepper performance. We're going to do a candlelight vigil for the gun violence that devastated a school where like that's just a daily occurrence now in America. But, like, we're going to do this thing because of Columbine. We're going to do these candles. So we're going to give fire to thousands of angry kids. Like, these kids that have already started tearing things apart. These kids that the night before were, like, destroying a rave tent with massive orgies and drug use and drove a van into it. Potential rape happening. Like, we're still trapped in this, like, romantic ideal of what Woodstock can be. So we're going to distribute fire in the form of candles to all these kids during the Chili Peppers who are well known for doing, you know, just really chill, thoughtful music about, you know, peace and love. So, of course, and they're, like, trying to go to the Chili Peppers, like, hey, can you mellow them out? He's like, that's not my job, man. 
you hired us to play our music. And because they're artists, they see what's going on. All of these kids have candles. So what are you going to do? Oh, well, we have this song that we play that's a, a cover song of a Hendrix song called Fire. Because they all have fire. So, of course, the Chili Peppers play that. And, you know, kids, being kids with fire. I, I mean, did they not watch Beavis and Butthead? There was a huge scandal about kids with fire. They, they use it to spread the fire to other things that are flammable. So what do they do? They set fires to stuff, and there's big bonfires going off. And the documentary, it kind of feels like the documentary used to be like, those chili peppers really incited those fires to be started. Like, okay. Right. Those super chill bros that, you know, the music festival of new metal, of Limp Bizkit and Korn and Kid Rock, those chill-ass dudes out there. They weren't going to start fires, if not for the Chili Peppers singing a song about fires. Thank God there weren't video games. Oh, they could have damaged their little minds and made them do all kinds of things. Blaming the art. Instead of the art just being a reaction to what's going on culturally to begin with. You know, if they didn't pass out the candles, if they didn't pass out fire to everybody, why would they, I mean, they could still play the song, but what a better time to play the song. Right? It's thematically perfect. Play a song about fire while they're handing out fire to everybody. And then when the spoilers, and the spoilers for history, after the Chili Peppers were done, there was no last act. Let's take a little break from the show to promote the many faces. That's right. I am also an artist. I do ink paintings on paper of abstract faces. A new face, a new painting gets released every single day over at InspiredDisorder.com. So head on over to my website to purchase original artwork directly from the artist. Also, there are prints available for select images. Head on over to InspiredDisorder.com. Buy original art. Buy prints if that's your jam. If you want 8x10 prints on high-quality paper. Also, if you're looking to wear some art, there are shirts available with original artwork by myself. Select faces from the many faces are also available in t-shirt form. You go to InspiredDisorder.com. You buy original artwork. You buy prints buy shirts you're supporting an artist directly and if you're the type of person that likes to invest in nfts there are also nfts available for select faces go to inspireddisorder.com now and now let's get back to the show they never mentioned in this documentary what the act was supposed to be or if there was ever an act but people were not happy imagine that imagine suffering through three days of a festival where you're treated, where you're charged a lot of money to be treated like livestock in hopes that there is some mega act that is going to close out. Like we are going to end this on the biggest note possible. And no, that is not what happened. So then it's just like riots breaking out. It was crazy. It was crazy. Like I, I felt bad for the people that were there attending, right? Not working. Like, everybody involved with the the production of Woodstock, those people were the villains in this situation, in my opinion. The documentary tries to, like, blame the crowd, which, like, yeah, the bro dude crowd and that energy is disgusting. Don't get me wrong. Like, I've grown out of that type of mentality, But I also know that mentality as well. I remember what it was like in those years. I listened to that music. I was that bro dude at one point, right? Extreme, right? But if you're a promoter and you're booking artists to play, you have to understand the energy. You're around music, I would assume, as a music promoter a venue promoter, you understand the kind of vibe that goes along with certain music. And if you're booking acts like Korn 
and Limp Biscuit and Kid Rock, you have to know what kind of vibe, what kind of energy is going to come along with that. It'd be like it'd be like booking acts like 311 and Sublime and uh, like the Cottonmouth Kings, and then being and and then like. And then being surprised that like people and like Snoop Dogg and being surprised that people are smoking weed. It's like, oh, these kids smoking weed. <sighs> Can't they just listen to this music that's all about weed? And this documentary is like, oh, these kids and their anger. Can't they just listen to this music that's angry? It's like maybe you should have thought about that, Mr. Uh, I need to make money on the Woodstock brand. And even after, like, when all the, the allegations, like the rape allegations and all these things, after everything failed, like, in every moment they're trying to play it up, like, everything's going good, very successful, small, if, you know, small, ins isolated incidents of bad things happening, but overall it's really well. It reminds me of, like, how people talk about police departments. Like, it's only a few rotten apples. It's like, our, okay. Just people dying daily, unarmed people being killed by cops all the time, people being harassed and maimed and disappeared and murdered and, and just everything. And it's just a few, you know, it's just a few problems here and there. It's like, like we can see through your bullshit, man. And it's the same thing with these promoters, how they're just so delusional, so unwilling to take responsibility for being horrible at what they did, for not preparing accurately for not doing the work to protect the people that were there to provide the people who paid money to be there with an environment and a show and an experience that would make them safe that would not put them in any harm where they could control them on some point maybe get somebody there who understands the music that's being booked and to understand that maybe we need some extra security for when because these bands there's going to be a lot of people doing a lot of drugs and there's going to be a lot of angry music so let's let's prepare for large groups of angry people in the crowd but they didn't do any of that all they cared about was money all they cared about was profit right this documentary is what happens when you take art and you try to squeeze every last drop of money out of it when you when you when you just rape art with capitalism right the sexual abuse didn't just happen to the majority of women that were there which that was a big part of it but the abuse happened culturally with capitalism raping art at Woodstock 99 so it was an interesting documentary kind of took me back to a time where I listened to that like I I can rarely listen to any of that like I still love Rage Against the Machine I love what Rage Against the Machine is doing they didn't even I don't even think they were at the festival but during the riots they were saying how people were chanting fuck you I won't do what you tell me like the the Rage Against the Machine lyrics while they're tearing they're rioting and tearing everything down because there was no final act like culturally th yeah that's that's where we were at culturally then and we're like not far away we don't have angry music like that. I mean, Rage Against the Machine is still there. I would say still culturally relevant. Very interesting to see all the conservatives uh, understanding what Rage Against the Machine is actually about these days. But, uh, like, I can't listen to angry music anymore. I'm just, like, so far away from that. I'm just way more depressed nowadays. <laughs> like, like I was when you're a kid, you like have this like energy, like oh, I can change things. I can I can affect change in the world. And then by the time you hit forty, you're like, fuck, everything is fucking done. It sucks. There's nothing I can do. Um, I could just watch documentaries about a time that was like at least I felt like I was powerful. You know, I don't feel powerful anymore. Not at all. And to listen to music like that is just, it just, it hurts. It hurts. Uh, but anyway, it's an interesting documentary, uh, Woodstock 99. You know, it, 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 and it's, you know, interesting to see how promoters, how they, how they frame things to make it kind of pat themselves. Like as they were, like the promoters act like they were the victims in this whole thing. Like they were the ones taken advantage of. 
versus the kids that were there and that were not taken care of whatsoever, that were just exploited at every opportunity. Uh, so check it out. It's on Netflix. Trainwreck, Woodstock 99. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.